Well, hello there, you groovy ghoulies. Welcome to this week's episode of Video Ferox, where we find ourselves neck deep in macho madness, which basically means all the kung fu and car chases and explosions and gunfights that we can possibly stand. And this week, we roll on with Brian Trenchard Smith's The Man from Hong Kong, starring a former James Bond, a dude from Golden Harvest, and Sammo Hung. So grab your popcorn, settle back, and let's roll the trailer. from Hong Kong. Listen, there's a Chinese cop in town. He's beginning to annoy me. Yeah, I think he should meet with a slight accident. Jimmy Wong Yu is the man from Hong Kong. A furious arsenal of martial arts. With his sights set, on smashing organized crime. In my country, Caroline, we have a sport. We take the giant praying mantis, put him in the wooden cage, and make him fight for his life with his own kind. I thought you would enjoy such a sport. You and Jack Walton in a wooden cage. <laughs> He's a very dangerous man. George Lazenby is Jack Wilton. Gun runner, dope peddler, ruthless czar of international evil. I've never met a Chinese yet that didn't have a yellow streak. East meets West in a head-on clash with no holes barred. Golden Harvest, who made Bruce Lee a box office smash, have joined with Australia's action specialists to produce a death-defying spectacle that staggers the senses. The man from Hong Kong knows no rules. Everyone he runs across is never quite the same again. I understand the gunman is dead. How did that happen? I killed him. Really? Well, in that case, you deserve a cigar. Tell me, Inspector, do you often take white girls to bed? Only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mmm, <laughs> <sighs> this is nice. What did you expect? Acupuncture? So do yourself a favor and answer a few questions. Yeah, and I love you too. This is Australia, mate. Not 55 days at Peking. Hey, don't give me any shit. Provoke him at your peril. I want that lunatic stopped. Nothing stands in his way for long. Nobody's safe from the man from Hong Kong. All right, welcome back, me amigos, from the trailer to The Man from Hong Kong. Directed by Brian Trenchard-Smith, who did like BMX Bandits and a bunch of other Australian action flicks. Starring, uh, let's see, it's got uh, George Lazenby, who you might know from Hawaii Five-0 and BJ and the Bear. Really? Yeah. You didn't do anything else? No, I, I had nothing else of note that I, I'm aware of. That you're aware of? That I'm aware of. Uh, it's got uh, Sammo Hung in it, who did the fight choreography for this movie. And we've also seen him in a bunch of other films. Right. Uh, it's got, uh, let's see, The Collector and Toe Cutter and uh, Mimi from the Mad Max movies in this. 
And it's got Jimmy Wong Yu, who did a whole bunch of Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest Kung Fu movies in the 70s. Brad, did you like uh, The Man from Hong Kong? Yes. It is a very good action movie. The action just starts and keeps going and going and going and going until you're like, oh, they're going to do a slow scene and they don't. This is a criminally underrated action movie. This is honestly one of my favorite uh, uh, down under action flicks. Mad Max, great flick. I love it. I love this 10 times more. They have comedy beats in the right spot. The slow periods are not boring. All right, well, you love it, I love it. Let's just get right into the spoilers so we can dissect that thing. So, spoilers ahead. Hadouken. To serve men, it's, it's a cookbook. So it opens on Ayers Rock in the Australian Outbreak. And it's this golden hour, the sun's just coming up, and it's a really gorgeous shot. And completely, totally disconnected from the rest of the movie, because after they get to uh, introducing Samo, it's ass-kicking city. Most of which takes place either in or around the uh, vicinity of Sydney. And so Samo, he is this drug courier down from Hong Kong, and he has a briefcase full of drugs, and he is going to exchange with uh, somebody in down in Australia. And he gets over, puts down his uh, briefcase next to the one dude they're sitting on a bench, and the other dude picks up a thing. And that's when the cops, who have been setting up the sting operation for a very long time, say, okay, move in. And that's when the ass-kicking starts. The guy, the drug mule, gets grabs the, uh, the the drugs, runs into the car, and then they speed off, and he's chased by a helicopter, and, like, explosions, and the car flips, and almost kills the camera crew. A piece of the car, I think it's the door, that comes flipping forward into the frame, and it very nearly killed everybody. <laughs> or the, that, at least that's what it looked like. According to the uh, director, according to uh, Trent Hurd Smith, he's like, that piece is getting awful close. It missed them by, like, that much. Meanwhile, up on the actual rock, so Samo is chased by the cops up the rock, and, you know, mad props on him. You know, the, the dude knows his kung fu. He can kung fu on the side of a goddamn mountain, and he proceeds to kung fu on the side of a goddamn mountain. Not only that, but you've got this amazing view all around. I mean, that's just can't be beat. They capture Samo and they drag him back to headquarters where they try and interrogate him. But of course, Samo being from Hong Kong is like, uh, no speaker English and uh, pretty much stonewalls them. He says, fine, we'll get somebody down from Hong Kong. And so they call up one of the, uh, the detectives from the Hong Kong police force and they have him come down. They might've been wanting to get rid of him for a little while just so that the people in Hong Kong could have a break. <laughs> Up to this point, we've had like all kinds of action and kung fu on a side of a mountain, all that sort of thing. Unfortunately, the opening credits kind of slams the brakes on the momentum because we have this lovely prog rock, I guess I'd call it. I hated that music. I've, I've heard a piece of the same music done better and of a version that they had for the movie probably was the worst version they could find or something because oh, I just hated it. And they did it again in the ending credits too. It's like, <laughs> I can't get away from this. And they have sequences of it in the movie, although thankfully not very many, but oh, it was just fingernails down the chalkboard. The song didn't necessarily offend me above and beyond the fact that it really just slammed the brakes on the momentum because over the uh, the song playing, we've got footage of this hang glider, this, this woman who is hang gliding over Hong Kong, and she winds up dropping into the police academy where Jimmy Wong Yu is, and Jimmy Wong Yu then, oh boy, he's inappropriate. He's all like, hey, you're here, you're arrested, why don't you go on a date with me and we'll make this matter go away. And I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that the woman doesn't take offense to it is also like, Huh? You couldn't get away with this sort of shit these days. And not only doesn't take offense to it, she helps him later on when he has to infiltrate the crime lord's building. 
the relationships that this guy has with women in this movie is odd. Well, in essence, this movie is a James Bond movie with kung fu. And so, you know, the hero betting several women is pretty on brand for something in the mid to late 70s James Bond. This guy, while he's handsome, he doesn't exactly have charisma coming out of his ears or anything like that. In fact, he's kind of abusive. Back to him being a dick on set, presumably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought the double act between the two detectives down in Australia and uh, Jimmy Wong Yu was actually pretty good. I liked the chemistry they had. Uh, I, I thought the two two Australian detectives were really tight. They had they, they, they worked well together. They did work well together, and they worked well with Jimmy. Of course, Jimmy is destroying everything and just basically causing insane headaches for these poor guys, as well as presumably their commander. And there's one bit later on in the movie where, where after the car chase where they're standing next to the house that got driven through, and they are just they just kind of pass off all the damage in sort of a nonchalant manner, like, well, we kind of expected this. <laughs> well, by this point, he's already destroyed a restaurant and a whole bunch of other shit, so it's like, okay, well, fine, what are we going to do? Let's just get rid of him! And that's what they try to do for the remainder of the movie, is like, okay, here's Sammo Hung, just take him and extra him and get him the fuck out of here. But that's when international crime czar George Lazenby has his sniper up on a roof across from the way shoot him, and that kicks off pretty much the big centerpiece of the movie, the big action beat in the middle. Considering just how intense the guy is, I'm pretty sure vengeance was probably just the thing. It's like, you wrecked my suit! <laughs> you got blood on it! And so for the next seven or ten minutes or so, we get a foot chase, we get a, a dude on a motorcycle getting kicked off the motorcycle, we get this fight in this restaurant where they absolutely destroy this kitchen. It's kind of interesting. You don't actually see the cooks leave, but there are no cooks in the kitchen two minutes into this fight. <laughs> it's like, where did the cooks go? Well, they obviously split out the back, back door or something because... Nobody in the dining room knows that the fight's going on. We'll get to that later. But the they totally, totally mess up the kitchen and spend a good, like, five minutes in there just trashing the place, throwing all sorts of things at each other, grabbing stuff, hitting each other with, with things, with fry pans. And there's two things that you see in the background, and actually once in the foreground. And it's not just kind of off to the side. It is dead center in the middle of the frame, this big ass meat cleaver. And the first time I'm watching him, I was like, oh dude, that is gonna come into play. Never gets touched at all. Kind of disappointing. <laughs> And then the fight goes from the back of the house to the front of the house, which, okay, so this has been going on for five minutes where they've been absolutely just wrecking the shit out of the place. They cut to the front of the house where everybody is dining, just daintily, just eating the food, not ignoring. And, the, and it's like, what, are the walls soundproof? Are you like all deaf? I, did you not notice that there is a huge fucking disaster going on in the back of the house? No. And then the fight pours out and they all freak out and run the fuck away and they completely destroy the dining area too and 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 finally finally after another five minutes of fight the sniper gets thrown into a fish tank of all things and apparently drowns and, and then the, the two australian detectives come in and it's like what the fuck did you just do <laughs> we turned your back on you for 15 minutes so somewhere along the line, uh, it's on the guy, the assassin, uh, that uh, died in the fish tank. Uh, Jimmy Wong Yu sees, like, the dragon tattoo on the inside of his forearm and says, Aha! I know that dojo! And then goes to the dojo to find out where the assassin came from. And there's this, it's a slow bit, but we watch Jimmy Wong Yu climb the outside of this goddamn building. And, okay, now further up the building, he probably had a safety harness and, like, stuff on. But for the first few minutes of the scene, we watch him walk up, grab this pipe, and climb up about two or three stories. I'm like, okay, that's really fucking cool. Also, really fucking insane. But there is a guy inside the dojo like on one of the higher 
uh, stories who's just like apparently hanging out. He's on the phone, like talking with like the big boss saying, yeah, the shipment of smack is going to be in town tomorrow. We'll be great. I'll see you then. Click. But that's when Jimmy Wang Yu bumps into a, you know, a, a dueling dummy or something and sets up a noise and the dude comes out and it's like, what was that? Kung Fu. And so here it is the middle of the night. The place is shut down. It's probably midnight or whatever. And so there's this little bit of noise and Jimmy Wang Yu's like, okay, I've gotten this. No problem. And all of a sudden, like, like 40 Kung Fu dudes come out of nowhere. What are they doing in the middle of the night in this dojo that's completely shut down, all skinned up in their gi, ready to fight? What? Yeah. Why? Granted, the fight itself in the training room for the dojo is actually a pretty good fight. But how did they get there? I mean, are they all sitting in a ready room that's like next to the training room? Are they sleeping in their gis in barracks in another room near? This isn't explained. I mean, normally you'd expect all the students to go home and <laughs> No, no, they're just hey out of the dojo overnight. What the fuck? They're, you know... They're, in their geese. In their geese. Now, mind you, a gi does make a good set of pajamas, but... <laughs> okay, so if you go and watch, like, an American uh, kung fu flick, and you have a couple of fighters, and you have the guys surrounding the fighters ready to, you know, so it looks like a crowd, and it looks like a big action scene. And generally, American directors don't know how to shoot that action scene. And so what happens is you see the guys in the background jumping in place with their weapons ready to go, waiting for their turn to attack. Brian Trenchard Smith is a good enough director where he manages to avoid that mostly. And occasionally you can kind of see a dude hanging out in the background. But the way that he cuts it and the way he stages the action and the way they, that Samo uh, staged the, the fighting actually looks convincing. So you don't get the dudes j dancing in the background. Most of the times when you see the dudes in the background, they are either getting up from having been knocked down or they're grabbing a weapon or they're moving around to get into position, but they're not doing the dancing back and forth routine. They're actually deliberately Everybody has an action to do. Yeah. They move strategically. And that actually worked really well, and it's a good fight sequence. I mean, man, these guys are just getting thrown all over. There's a guy who gets whapped into the wall with his forehead, and there's blood, and he's like, oh. And there's guys that are um, getting tossed into exercise equipment. And so after uh, Jimmy Wang Yu destroys everybody in the room, he heads out and gets the elevator and starts going down. But that's when the, the smack will be ready at midnight, dude recovers consciousness enough to come and fight him again. And so they have this fight on top of this moving elevator, which must have been an absolute bear to shoot. Also, dangerous as fuck because you've got the beams zooming right past them. And not only that, but there's two other dudes that are kind of peripherally involved in this as well. They're, they, they, they had a, a bit where they found him in the hallway, and he fights them. And so it's not just the first dude, it's these other two dudes that are, that are um, chasing him down the flights of stairs to intercept the uh, elevator. I kind of liked that. I thought that was, that was clever. It wasn't just the one guy on top of the elevator stalking him. It was three guys all together, but not all of them were involved at once. And I was like, that, that was, that was good. And finally, he gets down to the ground floor and the door is locked. <laughs> and so he just throws himself through the glass, glass doorway. He crashes through the door, leaving from the dojo, and staggers up to this uh, speeding minibus and jumps on the side and they zoom away. And he's like, help me, help me, I need to get away, I'm being attacked by a bunch of dudes. And the dudes come out and they're like, and they see the license plate, aha, let's find him. So he has just enough time to recover so that he can do more kung fu on the guys while they're trying to track him down. Meanwhile, the Australian cops are like, hey, what the fuck are you doing to a case? Ah, stop it, go away. So... They track Jimmy Wang Yu down to this veterinarian who is like well, well outside of uh, 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 Sydney. Out in the, not, not the Australian outback, but definitely in the rural bumfuck area. And they track him down and they like, they, they st uh, he gets in the minibus and starts driving away. And it's like, okay, I'm going to report back in. And of course, car chase. The set piece of the goddamn movie. There's two guys each in a car. 
and there's a guy on a motorcycle, and they run the van off the road. So he chases them on foot and pulls over a guy in this wonderful little sports car and commandeers it, basically, grab, yank, toss, and proceeds to chase after them on these winding roads that, and he just trashes that little sports car. It was a beautiful car once. And the thing is, this is 100% guerrilla shooting. They had no permits. They had no police stopping the traffic. They had nothing. They just said, okay, we're going to put some guy over this end of the road and some guy on that end of the road. We're just going to drive and make sure there's nobody in the way. And there's like, the, the there's... The poor guy who gets hit, the, the, the guy with the stop sign working on the road crew, he goes over to, like, the hood, and, like, I don't know how that stuntman isn't dead. The guy on the bike who goes over over the cliff, how that guy isn't dead. Oh, and then there's the, uh, the woman in the car. She gets run off the road, and the car does tumbles down the bank. You see her head pop out, of the, out from below the uh, eye line of the door, and she's just like, whoa, and... You're like, how is she not dead? <laughs> and just, I mean, they're slamming cars left and right. And like, there's one point where Jimmy Wang Yu hits one of the cars and like it veers off the road and smashes through a house. And like, then the house collapses. And I mean, just this insane Mad Max, eat your fucking heart out, action beat. Gets back into Sydney and the blue sports car is just beat all to hell and it's smoking and making funny noises it's just like man that owner is going to be pissed <laughs> the way that brian trenchard smith stages the the car chase there's a lot of there's that one scene where after there's a wreck and uh, jimmy wang Yu is trying to uh it is getting messing with the steering wheel and whatnot and the camera is down in the wheel well of the passenger side so it's this weird canted angle but it looks up and it's kind of kind of cool the way that it was shot uh there's a couple of other shots where the camera is mounted to the side of the car and really super low to the ground so you have this monster car and this road zipping past really fast so he's got a really good eye for the way that it, how to stage action stuff and not just in the car chase there's there's some interesting viewing angles that were done in some of the fight sequences where it wasn't just the camera statically sitting in one sp spot watching you had not just a variety of camera angles but you also had pan shots during fighting which can't be easy and at this point in the movie, Jimmy Wang Yu is like, dude, I've got to go take the fight to international czar of evil, George Lazenby. So he goes to his uh, his penthouse office uh, building and starts, and it's like, okay, I'm not going to be able to get in there. How do I get in there? Ah, I'll, I'll hang glider down onto the thing, gets onto the roof, and then like does some kung fu up there and does this. Uh, he grabs like some rope and swings down into the window down below. Oddly enough, he smashes through the correct window. <laughs> There's a lot of windows he can choose from. He gets the right one. <laughs> you know, don't don't question the movie, man. Just just fucking go with it. And that's where we get our final fight between Jimmy Wong Yu and international crime czar of evil George Lazenby where they set the motherfucker on fire. They set fucking George Lazenby on fire. And you can clearly tell it's him. Okay, now he's covered in like fr flame retardant gel. And so, okay, the disconnect of continuity is a little, okay, kind of obvious. But it's fucking George Lazenby on fire. There's a bit where he's trying to get his coat off and he's having a lot of trouble with it. And apparently he actually did get burned because the, the uh, flame retardant gel uh, got worn through or something. So he got burned over one of his arms. And the thing is, George Lazenby actually is a black belt in karate. And so him and Jimmy Wang Yu, who is also a martial arts expert from Golden Harvest, so the kung fu that they have is actually really well staged and it's a good fight. It's not my favorite fight. My favorite fight is the one where they destroyed the restaurant. But this one is definitely up there. So the dude being a drug runner and a gun runner, he has a vault. I mean, like a Fort Knox Goldfinger vault. And he's got all his blow and all his guns in there. 
Hero goes in there, then proceeds to grab a grenade, puts the grenade in the guy's mouth, and tapes it to his head before making him do the forced signed confession. Now, I'm not a legal expert, but I'm going to assume that stuffing a grenade in your suspect's mouth and then making him sign a confession, or the grenade will go off, not admissible in court, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just a legal gray area. <laughs> so with the law not behind him, fine, fuck it, he just shows international drug czar uh, George Lazenby into the vault, shuts the door, pulls the pin on the uh, grenade, and blows him the fuck up. And then, and then, not just content with getting into the elevator and going down, no, he fucking repels down the goddamn building as it's blowing up. And not only that, the two Australian cops are right where he lands. And they're like, what the fuck did you do to our case? And like, here's your confession, here's your evidence, and roll in credits. I'm like, okay, that's not <laughs> police procedure, this is not gonna fly, but the dude's blown up, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but he also blew up all the other evidence. <laughs> and that is essentially The Man from Hong Kong, the most insane movie that you will ever have the pleasure to watch. It's just nuts. <laughs> I love this film, but it's insane. <laughs> uh, do you got anything else left to say about The Man from Hong Kong? Nope. No, okay, <laughs> fuck it. Just go watch this movie. I am so glad this managed to get a domestic release because this is criminally underrated and you guys desperately need to see this movie. I'd never heard of this movie before we watched it for this and I was like, wow, this movie is freaking awesome. So go watch this movie and we'll catch you next week. Thank you, Brian Trenchard-Smith. Your service to machismo will never be forgotten. Next week, Therese and I, we take a look at quite possibly the most 80s movie ever. We're watching Commando, so come back for that. Uh, in the meantime, I want you to drop me an email, thevideonastyproject at gmail.com. And until you'll be back, then that, that, that doesn't even work. Never mind. Uh, just stay evil. Uh -huh.